Hello, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On behalf of my wonderful wife and myself, we most warmly welcome you to the Eagle Hour, a program that has changed so many lives, a program that has moved so many lives forward. God bless you in Jesus' name. It's now time for you to settle down, take your pen, take your Bible, take your paper, and get ready to be inspired and motivated. Get ready to position yourself to beat the best and beat the best. God bless you in Jesus' name. Also remember to invite your friends to this program. They too will be mightily blessed. Also remember to take part in the book please, and you stand the chance of winning cash prizes. God bless us in your lives. Remember, readers and leaders, the book can transform your life. The book can move you to the next level. God bless you in Jesus' name. The morning of your life is the best time to build a fortress for your success. success. And so are just like the ego. Like Join us today for insights, insights. anointing, anointing. Secrets. secrets, and a word and that will awaken the giant in you and make you a pace setter. It's time to bid the best and be the best. Be the, the Eagle Hour with your host, Dr. DK Olukoya. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Olukoya. You are most warmly welcome to this program, The Eagle Hour. The Lord will be with you, his anointing will be upon your life as we go into today's program. Bow down your heads and let us pray. Father, we thank you for the mightiness of the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your name which is above all names. Father, we thank you for your power which is the absolute power. We thank you for bringing us to this program. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, lay your hands upon your people, Lord. Let them experience your touch and your power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today we are looking at a very important topic. It is called victory over the spirit of masturbation. God is holy and it commands all believers to be holy unto him. The Bible says you shall be holy unto me for I the Lord your God is holy. It is disheartening and lamentable that many believers are slaves to ungodly and sinful habits. It is also unfortunate that many of the habits the Bible says one must not even hear amongst believers are now rampant in their lives. This includes addictions, pornography, alcoholism, all forms of sexual perversion like masturbation, and so on. Many have confessed during counseling sessions that they need help, they need deliverance. Many have battled with these matters, but they've not succeeded in conquering them. The truth is that thousands of slaves of sinful habits and captives of the mighty who are trapped in this evil net but are either scared or they've not been bold enough to cry out for help or they don't know how to get help. The truth I want you to know is that God has done his part by making his son Jesus Christ to die for your sins and by offering you the free gift of salvation. It is your responsibility to live in holiness and righteousness. It is your responsibility to present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. It is your responsibility to avoid filthiness of the body, soul, and spirit. It is also your responsibility to ensure that your body, which is the temple of God, is not defiled and that you are set apart for God's special use at all times. Our common enemy, Satan, is cunning and deceitful. He is the father of lies. In his bid to destroy man through masturbation, he and his cause have continued to claim that masturbation is common and harmless activity. They have made many to believe that masturbation is a natural and safe way to explore your body, feel pleasure, release built-up sexual tensions. They also say that there is nothing ungodly about it, that there is no medical or spiritual side effect to it. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Beloved, masturbation occurs among people of all backgrounds, genders and races. The truth is that it has perverted and destroyed millions of souls and is destroying millions even as I speak to you now. The Bible warns us that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil so that it does not take advantage of us. My prayer is that God will open your eyes so that you will not open your life to Satan and masturbation will not send you to hell or pollute your life in the name of Jesus. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, 
lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things are not inherit the kingdom of God. What is masturbation? Masturbation is a deliberate sexual stimulation of oneself, particularly when one is alone. It is like having sex with yourself. It is an issue many Christians and preachers tend to ignore. However, the truth is that masturbation is an enslaving and destructive habit, and it has no respect for gender, age, marital status, or position in the society. Some people call it solo sex. It has plunged many into the pit of guilt, shame, and defeat. We must understand that morality is about choosing what is right above natural inclination. A man or woman who is addicted to masturbation will have vested interest in deciding whether the practice is harmless or not. The truth is that whatever our godless society thinks about it, it is relevant to God. God alone has the final word on this matter, and God's verdict on it applies to male and female alike. Like all sinful, addictive, and destructive habits, Masturbation will linger in the life of his victim until God steps in to deliver him or her. Many have attempted to solve the problem of masturbation by taking medication. They have found that to be a waste of time and an exercise in vanity. There's a spirit behind masturbation, beloved. And until that spirit is bound and cast out and the victim is set free, he or she will remain a helpless victim of that evil habit from the cradle to the grave. This is why some people who form the habit as teenagers are still helplessly yielding to it at 50, 60, and 70 years of age, male and female. Also, in spite of having gotten married and having regular sexual intercourse with their spouses, some victims of this demon still engage in masturbation. Some prefer the masturbation to actually having sexual intercourse with their spouses. It is that terrible. When something enslaves a man, even if the man is a genius, he can't think straight because he is entrapped and entangled. Beloved, I beseech you, do not believe the lie of the devil that masturbation is harmless form. It is not. Rather, it is certainly the most dangerous form of sexual perversion and it can cause all kinds of terrible spiritual complications. One thing about masturbation is that it appears as an impossible task to escape from once that habit is formed. However, the truth is that those who turn to God in genuine repentance and cry to him for deliverance will be set free from this evil power. God's stand and instructions on masturbation are clearly revealed in scriptures. All believers will do well to learn and obey them. Our bodies belong to the King of Kings because he made them. That's not all. When sin corrupted our original bodies, God purchased them with the blood of his dear son, Jesus Christ. God also lives within us and takes residence within us. He sanctifies our body with his very presence, making our flesh and blood his palace, making our bodies holy of holies and the most secret place in the universe. Therefore, to selfishly indulge in anything that arms our body is to be guilty of the grievous forms of sacrilege. Since the Lord of hosts does not inhabit bricks and mortar, nor sacred objects, but the body of those he has redeemed, the Bible said that anyone who pollutes the temple of God shall be destroyed. God is the creator of sex. He has revealed how it is to be practiced between a man and a woman that have been joined in wedlock in his name. Those who are willing to follow the manner of God on sex and obey the commandment of the Most High will enjoy the best blessings attached to it. Conversely, those who are unwilling and disobedient will also reap grievous consequences. The God who made us knows best how we can achieve our optimum potential as human beings. He who made us knows exactly what is good for us and what is bad for us. For those who love him, his commands are neither a burden of frustration, but a gift from his hand by which he guides us into the life of glory and blessedness for which he created us. God's commandments, law, or rules are his boundaries for our lives. They are given to us out of his love for us. His boundaries are not designed to restrict our freedom, but rather give us freedom. Keeping God's rule is the way to life in all his fullness. And those who love him respect his boundaries and do not consider it frustrating or grievous. From the time of Adam and Eve even till today, most of the problems that man encounters are traceable to the choices he makes, contrary to God's instructions and boundaries. It is not surprising, therefore, that God has set boundaries and provided a set of instructions on sex. He expects his children to respect his boundaries and obey him in this regard. 
Sex is an exceptionally powerful bonding agent. So much that the Bible declares that no other sin damages us than the sexual sin. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If sex is such a powerful bonding angel, anything related to it must be treated with great caution, rather than being taken with levity or as a joke. If your thoughts during sexual pleasures are not focused on the person that you are with, on the neutral or inanimate object, then your attraction to the opposite sex will begin to lower and you are powerfully brainwashing yourself. You should train your body, soul and spirit not to yield to cheapness in sex. You should avoid corrupting yourself to the point where you're having sex is a shallow mechanical pleasure rather than an interpersonal union. Sexual bondage should be reserved exclusively for husband and wife. Anything else is perversion. Sexual bonding must not be used to join anyone to a relative or a stranger or an animal or an object. Masturbation cultivates yearning for sensation that differs from that generated by intercourse. The habit of masturbating when you are single will distract your visual engagement and appreciation of heterosexual relationship. It is not uncommon for people to find themselves so addicted to masturbation that they actually prefer it to heterosexual relationship. It is even customary for some people to find this solitary sex more enjoyable despite having an eager sex partner who is readily available. This is a tragedy. I have seen so many cases like this and we have prayed for so many cases like this. Masturbation programs into your thinking that you are doing something that you are generating by yourself. Solitary sex or masturbation has shattered the divinely ordained link between sex and love. It demoralizes and perverts not just sex, but the person ensnared by it. It also enslaves his victims and produces in him or her thought life and lifestyle outside the one recommended and approved by God. The practice of masturbating while you wait until God gives you a sexual partner is like taking drugs to kill unhappiness. You will not get any results. Giving up masturbation can be very challenging. The victory has to be fought for. But always remember that Jesus came to set the captives free and I seek deliverance upon my desire. The emphasis on self-satisfaction at the expense of one's relationship with God or his family is very bad. Solo sex or solitary sex or masturbation is not part of God's original design for man. God's approved design is for sexual expression in the context of love and commitment in a marriage. Masturbation can never be fulfilling and satisfying since it is an incomplete act to which there is no contribution by a complementary partner. But people find it enjoyable because they do not realize that it involves spirits. It also tends to make one to focus on what leading to blames, sometimes excessive introversion, low self-esteem, self-consciousness, and detachment from normal social roles. God did not design sex to be a solitary experience. Let me say that again. God did not design sex to be a solitary experience. It is supposed to be shared with another and only within marriage. It is intended to be part of a complementary interaction of self-giving love between a man and a woman who are committed to each other's lives. The Bible says that God is not against sexual pleasure, but he wants us to say no to things that can defy us. Unlike hunger or other things we physically desire, woman's sexual response encompasses the body, soul, and spirit. Without food and water, man cannot live. Living without sexual pollution does no harm and can be of great benefit. Our sexual parts were not designed for masturbation or for proper relationship in marriage. Those who masturbate use their bodies wrongly and for wrong purposes, and they use them for purposes they are not designed for. Similarly, those who masturbate completely underestimate the power of the money forces that they allow into their lives when they give into this impurity. So masturbation can cause serious havoc in people's lives, ranging from poverty to loss of virtues, loss of wealth, bad luck, unhappiness, marriage destruction. The enemy of our soul has invented sex toys and other sex objects to help masturbation. The purpose of this is to steal to kill and to destroy humanity completely. Sex toys are the devil's trusted weapons in the last days. And economically, the devil has grown this sex toy industry into a multi-million dollar industry just to destroy mankind and drag people to hell. 
Listen, beloved. Masturbation is fueled by demonic spirits and accompanied by the spirit of lust. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. It is this same spirit that takes people to pornography and all kinds of sexual perversion. Pornography is a fuel for masturbation. And pornography, like somebody has said, is an injection from hellfire into the body. It is never too late to get yourself free from masturbation and cast its demons out of your life. There are dangerous side effects of sexual stimulation of the body. It has effects on the mind. Masturbation can lead to addiction. As humans are sexual beings, continuous masturbation can lead to an addictive behavior, thus disrupting daily functions. It can also cause lack of concentration and memory loss. It wires the mind to be more sexually concerned than normal. It causes social anxiety. It has effects upon the body too. It has effects upon the spirit man. While scientists may believe that masturbation is part of self-exploration, spiritually it is not so. It opens up the human vessel spiritually, which allows for entrance of demons and all sorts of evil spirits. Some claim that masturbation has its own advantages. I am not here to contest this. They say it gives pleasure, it allows for self-exploration, that they use it to produce semen for semen analysis, they say it can reduce stress, release tension, can elevate the mood, relieve menstrual cramps, alleviate pain. They claim that it reduces unwanted pregnancies and risk of sexually transmitted diseases. They say it's an outlet for those who don't want to have sexual partners and that it prevents some gynecological diseases. But the disadvantages far outweigh the advantages. It gives birth to guilt because of conflict in the soul. It decreases sexual sensitivity due to aggressive or sometimes excessive masturbation techniques. It disrupts daily life when individuals begin to masturbate more than their desire. It interrupts their daily functioning. It affects their responsibilities and relationships and serves as escape from real life issues which they should address. Sometimes it causes them to miss work, appointments, schools or social events. Daily masturbation can surely lead to weakness, fatigue and early ejaculation or premature ejaculation. It may inhibit sexual activities with one's partner. It may cause excessive masturbation may cause damage to the nerves that allow for ejaculation. Excessive masturbation can lead to weight loss, poor vision, and sometimes impotence. It can lead to incomplete sexual satisfaction. It can cause damage to the sexual organs. It can lead to memory loss. It can lead to contracting of sexually transmitted disease as a result of shared sexual objects. It can cause social damage. The person cuts off from social interactions, doesn't enjoy group interactions anymore, and prefers to be lonely. But beloved, unknown to many people who practice masturbation, the evil habit has plenty of spiritually disastrous consequences. Masturbation being a form of mental pornography goes against the admonition of our Lord Jesus Christ, who admonishes us that if we look lustfully at people, we are already guilty of the sin of adultery. So mental fornication mental pornography. Masturbation is tantamount to one of the forms of sexual perversion condemned in the Bible. We can count it as many of the sins of the last days. Men will become lovers of themselves. It is rebellion against the Holy Spirit at its centers on self. The Bible teaches that our body is the temple of God. Having sexual relations outside marriage, even though it is with oneself, is not advised. Also, we ought not to join the temple of God with immoral thoughts and activities. Sexual immorality, like we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, it says sin against our bodies. And the Bible admonishes that whatsoever masters us, than the scriptures and Holy Spirit harms us and is not good for us. This is a serious tragedy and we must face it squarely. It damages self-control, which is the fruit of the Spirit. It centers on lasciviousness, wantonness, concupiscence, sensual behavior, self-incontinence, and it is a tragedy. It is seen as uncleanness and temple pollution. Many think it has no side effect. This is because the side effect is in the long run and sometimes not in the short run. You may however start reaping the precautions many, many years after. So it's better to abstain from this activity. It can have physical effects for the male. It can even begin to result in things that may affect conception. This is very, very sad. For the female, it can make them sexually unsatisfiable can lead to promiscuity and infidelity. They can even wear out their private parts. They keep on looking for men 
the bigger sexual organs to sleep with. It could even lead to bestiality. Now that I've said all this to you, it is up to you to make up your choice. Do you want to continue living under this torment? Or do you want to be totally free? The fact that you are listening to me now shows that you want to be free or you want to know how to help those who want to be free. The Bible says, Whosoever Jesus says free is free indeed. There are tested and proven steps on how to be free. The only solution to it is spirituality. You need to rely on God and not on your resolutions. John 8.32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall make you free. Stay away from pornography. Change your friends if they are worldly. Be involved with Christian activities. You must also be ready to be free. What are the steps for deliverance from masturbation? 1. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. 2. Repent from the sin and give God permission to walk on your heart. 3. You must agree that it is a sin. 4. You must know that you can be forgiven. 1 John 1 9. 5. You need to constantly study God's words to be free. 6. You must know that you can stop it. 7. You must desire to stop it. 8. Avoid pornography and any media that displays explicit content, such as romantic movies, books, videos, or pictures. 9. Avoid bad companies, such as friends that share explicit content and conversations that trigger sexual thoughts. 10. Get rid of sexual toys and any material that make you prone to masturbation. 11. You must pray constantly. 12. You must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and yield to Him. 13. You must avoid all forms of temptation. 14. You must pray for self-control and practice it. 15. You must avoid staying idle and alone. Get busy in a productive way. 16. You must think deeply about the consequences. 17. You must avoid dwelling on sexual memories. 18. You must avoid listening to worldly songs. 19. You must be determined not to go back to it again. 20. You must set goals of abstinence. Begin with a day, then a week, then a month, and a year. 21. Pray for a healthy relationship with another person. 22. Pray against the spirit of the dog and all forms of sexual perversion. 23. Pray fleeing prayers with fasting. 24. Have a mentor you can stay accountable to. 25. Ensure you obtain complete deliverance. Ensure you obtain complete deliverance. 26. Always be watchful and vigilant for triggers that may cause you to backslide. 27. Plead the blood of Jesus daily over your heart and mind. 28. Keep fighting spiritually. 29. Pray in tongues or engage in praises and worship when the urge comes. And 30. If you are already addicted, seek for counseling and deliverance. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. After this session, we are going to display on the screen prayers to pray against masturbation. If you are involved, I recommend that you run through these prayers. And the Lord will be with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In case you are listening to me and you are not born again, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. By say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You said I should pray with me. I congratulate you. Thank you for surrendering your life to Jesus in this program. The Lord will continue to uphold you and follow all our instructions. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this program. As they pray these prayers, give them uncommon breakthroughs. Give them uncommon testimonies. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The prayers will be displayed on the screen now. You take the Bible confession and you start the prayers. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Oh man. God bless you, Jesus. Did. Thank you for getting this program. So friend is gonna pray and deliver us than in the look up. We'll see you again next time. God bless you, Jesus. Did. And I share the grace of fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the strict function of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever now. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven glorious ideas. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 I believe that you've been blessed by this insightful teaching brought to you by our host, Dr. D.K. Olukoya. Join us same time next week for another episode of the Eagle Hour. But as you count the days, get any of these books to edify your spirit man and tap into more secrets. Connecting to the God of Breakthrough. Destroying marital jinxes. Dominion prayers. Power against captivity. Visit www.mfmebooks.com to get a book now. now. If you gave your life to Christ through this program, kindly get in touch with us with the details on the screen. And to be abreast of the Eagle Hour program, quiz and every other, like us on Facebook at MFM Eagle Hour and follow us on Instagram at MFM Eagle Hour. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here.